Are you overwhelmed? Is your work-life balance out of sync? Do you spend hours on daily tasks, doing the same thing over and over and over, but spinning your wheels because while you work in your business, you're not working on your family or your life? You need to marry the two together. Today's guest, Dave Shea, is all about work-life balance, finding and putting CRM systems and automation in place so that you can grow your business, a purposeful business, and also one that's profitable. Because Dave and I both agree, it's okay to make money on your business to collect a paycheck, especially when you're working your passion and your purpose. It's okay to do both. He is a hardworking photographer from Raleigh, North Carolina. He is a proud dad and a proud husband. He's a brand ambassador for SLR Lounge, MagMod, Fundy, my favorite, Shoot Proof, and part of today's topic, Tave. Not only is this guy all these things and an amazing human, but he is a taco hunter. As of today, Dave has delivered 382,470 images. He's photographed 595 events. Wait for it. 122 tacos consumed. This is what we're talking about on today's episode. CRM systems, automation, how to have a work-life balance, how to get your business moving forward, keeping your mental sanity intact. That's coming up on the Beef Evil Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. to the Beef Ammo Podcast, episodes full of candid conversations that speak to the hard truth that it takes more than hustle and luck to be your own CEO. Being a creative entrepreneur and running a business is not at all like the glam that you see on Instagram or reality TV. The truth is, it's showing up every single day, putting in the blood, sweat, and yes, lots of tears. Oh, do not forget all the hard work. I'm your host, Bobby Brinkman photographer, coach, speaker, wedding industry educator, diet Mountain Dew addict. You see why, right? I am hitting the pause on that hustle and luck myth button because it's more than getting a really cute website and hanging a now open sign. Not just waving the magic wand so that all the success, money, and clients will just be lined up ready to hire you. Hope is not a business strategy, my friends. And along with my guests, the goal of our podcast is to motivate, educate, and celebrate career and entrepreneurs discussing topics and information that will help you get and keep you in that CEO mindset through our candid conversations. You're going to hear stories from other creatives at different stages along their career journey. They'll be sharing the same struggles you have, as well as business insights, tools, and foundations that they have in place to keep their businesses moving forward, no matter what kind of S-H-I-T tries to knock you off your career path. I want to challenge you to unapologetically keep showing up to attract your ideal clients, serve them in the most fab way, while collecting a purpose-driven paycheck. I want to empower you to create a career that you not only love and are proud of, but also one that your clients love and will support even more. Now let's get started. All right, listeners, welcome back. As promised, we are going to dive in about, man, work-life balance and CRMs and, and what can we do in our creative businesses, especially photographers. So photographers this is your episode. Everybody else, listen in, but we're going to dive. I've got the amazing, talented Dave Shea joining me. You heard me mention him in his, uh, his bio introduction. And uh, I left off a little bit about taco hunter extraordinaire, because <laughs> I think that is a perfect way to dive into a hardworking photographer and a brand ambassador. But we're going to start with the food. We're, it's in the middle of the afternoon here, Dave. Let's start it. Welcome to the show, Dave. I'm super excited to have you. I am so glad to be here. It's uh, it's really just a privilege to be able to chat a little bit and get from your experience as well as uh, being able to share a few things, uh, bumps and bruises I've learned along the way in my <laughs> my industry experience as well. So you know, really just excited to walk through it. If you're in the trenches as a wedding photographer for more than one year, you have got so many bruises. You have bruises <laughs> in places you had no idea you could get bruises, you know? <laughs> 
So tell us a little bit about that taco hunter extraordinaire. So, so yeah, that's a, a weird little marketing tip that I picked up. I, uh, I basically, a few years ago, I was doing these weddings in, in New York and we would come back super, super late at night. Uh, and so if you're coming back in New York super late at night, generally you have not been fed by the venue. You've survived on granola bars all day long and you are now looking for any form of food. And your options at that hour of night are fairly limited. And so what happens is, is Taco Bell is usually the, the horrible stop that you make on your way to the house. And so my team and I got in the habit of stopping at Taco Bell to the point where I hired somebody new and we were driving home and he, we were driving home at like, I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, like an afternoon wedding. And he interrupts. He's like, hey, are, are, we, are we still going to stop for tacos? <laughs> I was like, what, what do you mean? Like, who talked to you? And so... Uh, I made the website shortly after myphotographerlovestacos.com, uh, which right. goes directly to my website. And the fun part about that is that that thing has made me more money than I think at this point my regular website has. So it's been a, a nice little thing I've picked up, but tacos are very near and dear to my soul at this point, we'll say. Well, and you know, I, I, New York, anywhere, I think everybody, I talked to a lot of photographers in Cincinnati and they got to go get a dog with chili on it at the end of a wedding. I mean, down yep. here, it's like, you know, down here savannah and coastal georgia where i am it's like you're gonna go through and get something really really cold because pretty much the whole year <laughs> it's 105 degree humidity <laughs> yeah. somewhere. but i i think that that falls into rituals i mean it's just like that yep. i leave everything at a wedding and i, I know you do too i mean yeah. you know, dr yes driving home can we talk about oh man if i had one more time to do that or one more second but i leave it all i'm i'm that i'm that photographic athlete that just leaves it on the floor so yeah I have to go, you know what? This is my ritual. Just like when I started, I pack things a certain way. I wear the certain clothes. I got to wear the colors. I mean, it's all, I joke all the time. It's like, this is the underwear. This is the shoes that I wear. This is what <laughs> yep. I do, you know? And 100%. It, it's, and so it's just, if I don't do my coming home drive through I'm jinxing myself. You know, yeah. I've got to do something. So, so I love to hear that everybody else feels that way. And for our new <laughs> photographers listening in, that's just some of the value that, that I love to bring here is that, you might just be starting out, but man, us old guards and our, you know, us <laughs> ones that have been around for a long time, we're just as quirky now as we were when we started. So, you know, we're glad to have you along for the ride and learning. So diving into that hardworking photographer and the brand ambassador that you yeah. are for, for several products, you're also a proud defender of the work-life balance. So today's episode, everybody, we're going to talk about automation, CRMs, and while we're not going to dive into comparing one product to the other, we are going to talk specifically about one a little bit, but there's a reason why. Um, Dave is also an educator and uh, he's a brand ambassador. And I'm going to let him share with you. You all have heard my philosophy. If I speak to something, if I have an affiliate link or I tell you something, it's because I have used it. So Dave, share a little bit about some of the other brand ambassadorships that you are and how that also helps you in your business right now. And then we'll dive into CRMs, but how being affiliated with certain companies yeah. does make your life easier. Yeah, and I think the, the transition for me from photographer to ambassador was not one that I ever forced or tried. Like I never went out to be a MagMod ambassador, right? Like that was something, in, in fact, I am on record and I'm reminded of this often as a pretty outspoken person that was against MagMod when it first came out. I didn't like, I was like, ah, it's just one of those new tricks that yep. photographers are gonna buy into. Yeah, it's so, and you know what, like, I, I did a bridal shoot and I was there and a friend of mine came to assist me and she had a magmod there and I was like, oh, let me, let me, let me see that. Let me, let me take a look. Right. And I noticed that I was able to maintain communication with the bride that I was working with yep. and I was able to not break eye contact or anything while I was changing out all my modifiers. And that seems so simple, right? Like that seems like, oh, well, that's not that hard. Right. But like all the lighting stuff that I used at the time was very difficult and I would stop. And so I'd start talking to them like, hey, this is what we're going to do. And then I'd stop and I'd go mess with my lights. And then I'd come back and I realized that it broke the flow of the shoot. Right. And so then, then I started using MagMod stuff, right? Like, and, that was, and then I transitioned to them. And so, and it was the same thing for me doing this. So I'm, I'm with MagMod, I'm with Fundy, I'm with a few other companies as well. Uh, Lytra is another one. And it's, the, it's all the same thing. Does this make my life easier? Does this make my client's life easier? If you can do either of those two things, I don't care what your price point is. Like, I just don't. Like, right. it will help me deliver more value long term. And so it was the same thing with Fundy. I used to design all my photo, all my albums in Photoshop, every single one, right? 
and like and it was horrible <laughs> like I, I had no idea and then like somebody's like you got to do InDesign and I was like let me try InDesign and I'm like this is twice as bad like I knew Photoshop this is just horrible like right. and so like you try to figure things out but like when you mentioned the proud defender of the work-life balance what I what I realized was I was doing very well for myself and you and I tout the similar thing where when when photographers talk 12 figure photographer like whatever that is that's great but that doesn't necessarily mean anything because in my in my heyday if you will i was in i was living just outside of new york i was doing great i did 53 weddings for myself um i mean, i second shot a bunch as well and so i did 53 weddings in a single year which first off do not recommend yes. not wise really really foolish and, and no associates like that was just me 52 weeks in the year and, guys 52 weeks in the year he did 53 you do the math <laughs> It was, it was a bad time. And, but what I did that year, so I cleared 300,000 in revenue, right? Which is pretty awesome until you look at the fact that I worked every Friday, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's that too. But so I did every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from April through November, the year that my daughter was born. Wow. And so I almost missed the whole first year of her life first off. And second off, I was working 70 to 80 hour weeks at a minimum, which I left my job as an engineer right? specifically so that I would have lower work weeks and I could do my dream job and all this stuff. And so when you break that down hourly, I was making about 12, on a, the best day, either the best week that I looked at, I was making $12 an hour. The worst and the normal, I was making about $6.50 an hour, which is worse than my first time job, right? Like, or like it was terrible. But like we, we tout these things for success. We do these things. And that's where like a lot of times when you start getting in the, like you start talking and you start doing stuff in the education world, you start saying like, oh, this, this because of this or this lines my right. pockets. But the thing that I genuinely care about is I almost ruined my life as a photographer, my personal life because of my company. And that's where the only companies that I work with right now believe in that same value of we need to provide value to our clients. Like you said, leave it all on the wedding day, right? right? Give that out there. But we also need to defend the life that we're trying to build. And when you are a creative, like you're not really given that. And like, I'm not full blown creative. Like I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle of right. like creative versus business and all that stuff. But like so many people just get so caught up in the, I have to get this done. I have to get this done. Nobody else is going to do it. I'm going to do all my account accounting. I'm going to do all my right. own stuff. I'm going to do everything here. And it becomes so overwhelming that you just work these crazy hours and never pay attention to it. And what you're doing is it seems like it's good intentions, but you're doing things that aren't bringing in revenue and you're driving your hourly rate into the ground. And so you might as well just go work for somebody else right. at that point. Because Way less risk. The, well, because Benefits are usually weekend. a whole lot better. Exactly. <laughs> You'll have the weekend exactly. with your family because you punch out because you don't care. And I don't think yep. any of us in the creative world or the entrepreneurship world got into it because we wanted to be told, show up here and do this. We wanted to mm -hmm. know that we can make an impact. And I think you believe along with me, yeah. you can have an amazing sustainable career and be profitable. And it's mm -hmm. okay to yeah, have yeah. a purpose and get paid. And you cannot yeah. do that. You cannot serve yourself or anybody doing multi weekends, multi weddings every weekend. And I, yeah. I joke a lot and say we have the, you know, I want to go to Disney photographers that go out there and charge 500 bucks and they don't care what might happen. They get their money and they go. Something to be said yeah. about it because they don't care, they leave. The rest of us that want to have a career, I want to make that relationship. And if you are working that hard, your clients are suffering and your family suffering. And, mm -hmm. and it's really hard when you have younger kids, you know, I don't have any kids. So I, I speak from the experience of being the professional aunt, but when you have to start choosing and, and looking at the kids and I can imagine as a parent saying, Hey, I really can't go to your first yeah. hockey game today or soccer game today. Cause I'm going to go over here. At some point, your kid just knows you're not going to come to the games. And then are you might yep. as well just be sadly one of the statistics of, Oh yeah, my mom comes this week and my dad comes the other weekend. And there's no reason you're not there. So you need to invest yeah. in clients that are going to appreciate photography and they have photography as a priority. Yeah. You go work with them every weekend because you are sacrificing. Again, it's a choice being an entrepreneur. So that's where automation comes in yeah. and being in the ambassador. Yes. Anything that we do is to help us make better. So now we can automate and we have... Yeah you know, customer relation management systems. And gosh, when I started, you know, hell, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm still a manila folder person. Everything I do is, an, I, if, if shit goes down, I can find everything I need to do. You know, that, that's the joke, yep. you know, 
when the internet mission crazy, control right here right, right. When the internet goes crazy with everybody on Zoom, I can still tell you where I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to be there and what I'm supposed to be doing. You know? <laughs> yep. So, so we now live in a world where we have multiple things that we can make our business better. And what do you think, Dave, is the number one thing business-wise if you're running a studio? And when I mean yeah. studio, guys, I mean you can just be by yourself. Yeah. Um, and we can dive a little bit about associates and teams. But if you had been doing this for a while and you know you're getting inundated, you got to have a CRM. So maybe explain yeah. a little bit your, your vision of a CRM, what it should do and yeah. how you should know to have one. Yeah. So, so obviously, so you mentioned, so client relationship and, and a lot of times people go client relationship and they just, they stop right there. Uh, and the, but client relationship management, right? That's so in the definition of what we're supposed to do, people look at all the, a lot of the time as management as, Oh, I just have to organize these things into these structures and it just keeps me organized. But what a good CRM is going to do is not just manage people in organizational fashion. It's going to manage them and give them direction. And that's the thing that you and I both share is when we talk about being in this industry for a while, the thing that separates the experience is the fact that I am able to manage my relationship with my clients. So I'm able to flip that whole thing right around and go, you know what? It's not just everything reacting to me because I can see the photographers right now. They're in the Facebook groups and you, see, you know the people that are not ready for this stuff. Right. Because when something like 2020 happens, all of a sudden they're just scrambling, trying to go, well, my client told me this and I don't know what to do. And, I, and that's the kind of consensus where the difference is if you're ready for it, you are the one managing the relationship between your client. And so right. what I'm looking for in, in a CRM, there's a few things. Obviously, I'm looking for organization on a basic level to begin with. I want to be able to handle bookings and invoices. That's obviously like a, a, a key functionality. I want to be able to, hey, sign this contract, take this payment, and that <laughs> needs to be sa taken care of in a safe, secure fashion. Right. I'm not going to do like, hey, I'm going to send you this Google Doc to sign. And once you sign that Google Doc, I'm going to need you to Venmo me this and like PayPal me the dip. Like it's horrible for your clients. Like you've got to look and look at your clients and go, all right, I am going to make it as easy as possible for you to pay me. Like that, like that is step one before any, before you go anywhere else, it has to be ridiculously easy to get paid. Like that's the bare bones of anything. And the second thing is you should find a, a general consensus that you know where your business stands at a given right. day. And not like, not that, to go in, in kind of a dark place, but like think about how fragile our businesses are. Our business is not like, like if Target, like if somebody calls out sick from Target, right? right. They have another employee to jump in. I am not Target. If I, like, if I go down, there's a good chance my email doesn't get taken care of on a daily basis. And right. so if you've seen this happen where like, I've had the unfortunate experience of watching people that have been in this industry where like they pass away suddenly or something like this happens and Nobody was ready to take care of their business and other people I've watched people jump in to try and salvage and like oh. friends that friends have done incredible jobs at that. Like one of the guys that I respect the most that has taught me probably the most about photography. His name's Josh Lynn. He's a photographer in New Jersey. Um, incredibly talented photographer has been in the industry for a long time. And he has been the bailout guy for so many people that just didn't have backup plans and not like long-term backup plans, short-term backup plans. Like right. I didn't even know that there was going to be a wedding today and they decided they wanted a second shooter and it's two hours from now. Right. Josh is the guy that shows up. Right. But there's those people that come in, but like the thing is the responsibility is on us as photographers to have things set up. So like if anything happens to me, my wife has a login to my CRM. And so I use Tave and I'll talk a little bit more as to the why behind that. Um, but I, she has that login to Tave. She can log in and say, this job was delivered. These two have these ones. This one is out to editing or in the process or whatever that looks. She can see everything about my photography business. How much money is outstanding? How much has been paid? Everything. And she's not the only one with it. Right. She's got logins. Other people have like, I don't care. Like I'm, you want to see the inside of my business? Great. You're my 911 call. So like, right. be ready yeah. to know. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people miss in terms of a CRM is, hey, this needs to be a full picture view of my business at any given time. And so that's the, the kind of the next step. Um, and the last thing, this is kind of a, a, an optional, I think about this as if you're growing in your business, you're not going to need this step in the beginning. Right. But what you don't want to do is start off with a CRM that's not ready for growth. And so you can find these CRMs that are easy to set up. They're easy to get going and they're very just pretty and beautiful and awesome. And you just set it up and it's great and it's done. And what happens is, is you don't, they cap your ability to grow. And so long-term, the thing that I think people should keep in mind when it comes to building out any system for their business, I don't care if it's a CRM, gallery, software, whatever, you want something that is going to help you manage your clients 
you want something that's going to be able to set their expectations. Right. Because I don't have clients, and this is, this is my favorite thing to tell me, I don't have clients ever email me the day after their wedding asking me where their right. photos are, right. right? Ever. And you know why? Because I have already told them right. so many times, here's how the process is going to go. Here's how the process is going to go. Here's how the process is going to go. To the point where the day after their wedding, at eight o'clock in the morning, when I know they're not awake yet, Right. Like they are not going to be up at 8 a.m. after I saw them go to bed at 2 a.m. <laughs> like, right? like I know that they are not going to be up at 8 a.m. But 8 a.m. they get an email from me that says, hey, I had such a great time hanging out with y'all. I want you guys to know what it's looked like. Your images are already backed up on my computer in three different places. I want you guys to know that I'm working on editing them probably over the next week and a half. And what I'm going to need from you is you're going to get a questionnaire from me in the next couple of days. When you get that questionnaire, it means your blog post is about ready to go live. So that means your sneak peek is here. So if you see it, fill it out real quick. Uh, I don't the get the email. Point. Exactly, exactly. Or you don't get the email from, or I've been at weddings where people said, the grandma or the aunt will go, so when? No, 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 no. Don't even ask Bobby. It's three to four weeks. I mean, they'll, exactly. just, they'll just say that. Or, and like for me, they'll say, no, don't ask Bobby. And that you have to talk to Tina. Because Bobby doesn't know the whole backside yep. of the admin. I, I tell people, you do not pay me to be the admin. You do not pay me to answer yep. your emails. When Tina sends that questionnaire out, that's because she's getting ready to do your blog post. And that yep. means she's getting ready to tell you, hey, Bobby just loaded everything to shoot proof. Here it goes. You know, that's <laughs> what's happening. Yep. And that's the stage that I think you need something to grow with as well. You, yep. have, to, you have to sign up with a company that, and, and you need to check. And I'm going to be yep. very blunt here, especially now. You need to go with a company that believes what you believe in, that yes. supports your voice, yep. that isn't so far off your beliefs, right? And then you want to invest in one that's a little bit more than you need. Because the yep. last thing you want to do is start all this and then within a year, because you're doing it right, have outgrown it and start. And that brings up to the number one myth that I always get asked is the learning curve and the investment. So why do you want to start with something that you've got to keep going all over and over? If you think about it and look at your investment, you spent twice as much starting over. So yep. maybe defunct some of those myths for our listeners about oh, yeah. there is, it is a learning curve and there is going to be an investment, but the oh. upside is. Oh, I can make it even better. It's not even, so like you look about it as an investment, right? So like right. you look at subscriptions and photographers, we get carried away with subscriptions. Yes. I will be the first to admit like when I, so when we moved and this is, I know like a lot of times we'll, we'll talk about failures and things that I've done wrong in business. And I'm very open about them because like most people that listen to this are closer than they, like I have a friend that missed one wedding delivery date and wound up years behind. And there are so many people that I know that they're just one mistake away from winding up in a horrible situation because they're, they're, one domino falls and the rest of your systems aren't ready to catch it. And so one of my big mistakes, so I talk about that 53 wedding year, right? Like huge pat on the back. I started winning some awards. I, was, I, I got like some sponsorships and stuff and I was all big and fancy and people knew who I was. And, and you know what happened was is the next year, at the end of that year, my wife and I had a conversation of, hey, this isn't going to be sustainable long-term. You, you have to actually be here to be a part of this family. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, man, that makes sense. I guess, I guess I should start to think about that. And so we moved 600 miles away on two weeks notice. And I completely rebuilt the business from scratch. I ditched almost all of my clientele. I started completely over. And we went from that $300,000 of revenue. My next year was $35,000 of revenue. Yep. And if you're a business person at all, you know, $35,000 is a not enough to live on on its own and b not profit. Right. So it was a pretty bad year. <laughs> and so we made some harsh adjustments. But the thing is, I looked at my business from the ground up and I said, what do I need to do if I want to do this? So, and I, I genuinely like, I love marriage. I, and it's, it's important to me. And I believe that like in my core, that better marriages equal better families, equal better communities, equal better nation. That like, in my being, I believe in marriage and I love being a part of it, right? Like that's something that's so crucial to me. And so when I see this, I'm like, I really want to be a part of wedding photography going forward. And so I look at this and I'm like, all right, like, what can I do to, to make this work? Because I need to prioritize my family and I don't want to like, I have given up so much with my family trying to do this. So I'm like, I can't, I have to find a way to balance the two. And so what I looked at was, what do I actually have to do? 
right. is a question that I had never asked myself before in business. But I looked at this and I was like, all right, what actually requires me to do it? And then the, there was a very short list, if I'm being completely honest, because if somebody asked me what my job was, I'll go, oh, I'm, and like you see the memes floating around Facebook, right. like I'm an accountant, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, and it's all like, ugh. But what actually needed to be done by me was very little. And so I started looking, going, all right, what if I could find a way to automate when somebody fills out my contact form? What if I don't have to personally respond to every single lead that was coming in? I had 300 leads a month, which seems like a great idea, but I was personally responding to every single one of them. It was horrible. I get like 250 price shoppers every single month. And I just, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. I don't need to be doing that, right? right. Like, I do not need to be doing that. Right. And so all the time that I could have been out shooting or doing anything else, getting leads from business that were quality, marketing, whatever this stuff was, I was spending responding to these emails that were going to go nowhere. And so I started being like, all right, well, what if I just checked off that? And so then I looked in, and at the time I was using, and I've used almost every CRM out there, um, at least in some limited capacity, um, if it's just demoing a trial, to I've right. switched my business to five different CRMs. So right. like, I've gone through the gamut, we'll say. Um, but so I, when I switched and did all this stuff, one of the things that I kept on coming back to was like, all right, well, what if I just automated this one thing, just one, and I just said, all right, that's five minutes here, and then that's 10 minutes here. And then all of a sudden, I started building this out, and this was like 2016, I think, that I started to like really gain momentum. All right. What if, how, how crazy can I get with this? Mm -hmm. And so I started looking, and I now get to the point where I have money hit my bank account. And I don't know where it came from because I'm not in the office. Right. I work on average now on the other, on the other side of this, right? On the other, like on all the bad that I went through on rebuilding, on putting in all this effort to build out systems and sustainable business, like you mentioned. Now I work between five and 15 hours a week. If I shoot a 12 hour wedding, I work six to seven hours the next week. And right. that's it. Right. I'm done. Right. The thing that changed the most, and this is like when it comes to building out systems was I started looking at the things that I could build out as templates and then I, I could automate. And we talk about growing. One of the things that happened over that time was I realized that after every single wedding, right? I would deliver them their, this gallery. And I saw you shoot proof for my galleries. And so I would deliver this gallery and I pay shoot proof a fair amount of money a year. Right. right. So like I pay them whatever the unlimited plan is. Cause right. I've been doing this for far too long at this right. point. <laughs> and so, and I'm too lazy. I don't want to have to go there. It's automated. It never comes down. I don't have to do the task. It just stays bingo. there. See? Well, That's it. And so that was the thing. Right. And so like, it just, it just lives there. And so what I, so what I realized though is I'm paying yearly for this price right. to provide a service to my clients, which is great. But what I also realized was that I was never passing this forward onto my clients. I just did it. Right. Right. And so what I did is I automated an email and I sent it out a year after the wedding. And I said, Hey, I'm going to take your wedding gallery offline. It's been a year. You've placed probably the print orders you're going to place. If you'd like me to back them up for another year, 60 bucks. Right. If you want it, here's the link. You can go ahead and pay for it. If you want to buy three years, here's a hundred bucks. Right? right. Something that I was doing for free. Right. Just, I have the unlimited plan with them. I know I'm going to keep having that unlimited plan. And all of a sudden what happened was I shot 20 weddings a year, right? Like 18 of those weddings took the $60 a year. Sure. And what happened was my shoe proof is a now completely paid for for the year. Right. But B I made extra money. And so now we've got a running joke with my wife and I where like anytime somebody buys one of those things now we just, we'd go out to dinner and it's a date night money or sure. we don't go out now we get DoorDash, but you get the deal. Exactly. <laughs> and so, but like we found ways to pay for the service itself. And so I looked at, and so that changed everything for me. So when I looked at my CRM, the thing that I looked at the most was, is this making me more money? And so the thing, and this is the, the divide, like what made me stick with Tabe was I was able to automate a lot of the stuff, but I was able to have these like little optional items that people can put at checkout. So rather than waiting a year after their wedding, so now I took it a step further and I said, hey, you've got six months to buy whatever you want to. Right. You can download your images. You can back them. I include digitals, right? Like I'm one of the weird people that like, hey, here you go. But you've got six months to do it. Mm -hmm. Take that time. If you need them after that, you can renew your gallery for a year. You're more than welcome to. But now at booking, when they go to sign up, they've got my collection and I've got one collection, pretty easy. Hey, here you go. At the bottom of that, it goes, hey, if you want, you can add in one year three year or five years right now. Check the box and it's all done. Right. And like doing that and it makes us so much cash. And like right. those little purchases, those little things like that have like really helped fuel my business in a really bad time. 
because like those little purchases, when you think about like charging something for as simple as charging for galleries or something like that, it was literally, I'm trying to think of how much um, it wound up coming in, but it was completely free. Like it wasn't something I had to do. And it's just little bits and pieces here and there over five years worth of clients, even let alone 10, 15 years. If you're doing this long term, right. you're stacking up residual income, which is usually associated with pyramid schemes. I promise it's well, not. It's not. <laughs> but, but, but I think that's the thing too. It, it's like, it's whoever said just because we now have an internet system back in the day, I shot negatives. Bingo. I had to keep those negatives in a pretty cool place all bundled up because they would fit up. But if I move and back then, and since then I've moved three times, do I, I'm, I'm hauling now full disclosure, those listening in my professional sport photos have all traveled with me because contractually I'm obligated and I want Wayne Gretzky to call me for something when he gets an award. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yes. so it, it's those kind of things, but the people's photos that we take are valuable. You yes. and I believe immensely in this is our purpose. This is a service. It's yeah. valuable because people deserve to have our legacies. We yeah. want them to have these photos. I'm exactly to witness it, but I'm not required to be the gatekeeper of your memories. I'm required on the day of the wedding to be the historian, but yeah. I'm not required. And so if I didn't have shoot proof, what would I do? So, yeah. Photographers especially go, well, I need a gallery delivery system. I'll do that. But they don't want to do the other things that would also help exactly. automate it. And it, it's, I mean, I, and I want everybody to know that just because I use Shoeproof, I use Shoeproof before they purchased Tave and whatever, yeah. that I, we're not saying they're one and the same. Full no. disclosure, you know, none of us get paid from those people. So I'm just saying, but the difference is, is we as photographers want to deliver what we just did to our clients and the number of people that go, that don't even use all the things that Shoeproof has to offer because they don't know better because they yeah. didn't take the time. And I firmly believe if you know better, you'll do better and you don't know yeah. what you don't know. Right? So now you have built in these systems. And I hate to say, I, I'm one of those people that I don't like to say as you and I are educators, I don't like to say yeah. we have to educate our clients. Yeah. I don't believe I'm educating them. I'm letting them know of the options and the experience that's going to be when you work with me, that requires you. How long would you like me to hang on to your images? Because let's face it, folks, most of these couples that get married now, especially, are going to move in three months, if not three weeks, because they got married to start their career. They don't want to worry about it. And they don't want yep. me to be calling them. And I'm not going to spend my time automated or not going, hey, one day left. Goo, guess what? No, it's sick, done. And then you do that. So now yep. that we know we have those, we're, we're getting going for about a year. And now we're building up our clients. We want to get paid. And I don't want to be sitting here because, again, if you have a website that's doing its job and converting, you will probably get 300 inquiries. Now, maybe some you can weed out with a little bit deep dive on your website, yes. but the point is people are still coming to you without paying enormous amounts of money advertising somewhere else. The, C, the SEO and your website are your business folks. Everything else you yeah. have at places rented, but this is yours, right? Yep. So now you're at the point where, man, this is working. I don't wanna get all these things. Now I need to start, I do my research. You are perfectly example, Dave, to say, do some trials. Find out yeah. what you don't like. What are some oh, yeah. things, so a person might not know what they don't like or what they should. So what should they be looking for that would be a defining factor to settle on one of the CRMs? Yeah, so, so the first thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna absolutely lead with this. No CRM is perfect for every business. Right. Uh, no CRM is usually even perfect for my business. Right. Using Tave has meant sacrificing in certain areas or learning certain areas so that I could then do things that I could maybe do in another software. As a complete solution, I like Tave the best, right? Like, so that's where I wound up. But the reason, the, the questions that I ask myself are this, does it have templates? can I template every living thing? Like, I don't want right. to do the same work twice at all. Right. My leading question, like, so when I meet with coaching clients and I talk to them through how to run their business, they're overwhelmed, they're trying to get stuff, they're, tr they're losing track of jobs or like not getting pricing stuff in time, whatever that looks like. The first question I ask is, what jobs are you doing more than once? So we have them write down every single task that they do on a weekly basis. So before you're allowed to do it, you got to write it down. And I'm annoying right. about this, right? Like I get like up in your grill. Right. But then we go through that list that you've written down for a week. You're doing this three times, five times, seven times, like whatever that looks like. And so you start looking at those emails, those questionnaires, those, those questions you're asking, the emails you're getting. 
Right. How many times am I getting this email? Well, right. what happens is like, so if I get the same email from 10 different clients in a six month stretch, it means that they all have the same question, which means that I should be telling them the answer to their question before they ask it. Right. And that's what separates real business owners from people that just want to do this as a hobby. Right. Because when you start asking those questions and you start looking at like, right, what are my clients telling me that I'm not telling them? Right. And that's really what you start doing. So you want some form to be able to template these things. And that's key. Um, some level of automation is a must with how many options there are to be connected to the internet right now. Like there is something that you have to be doing stuff automatically. Like your invoice reminders should never be being done manually. Right. Like it's one of those things like your clients are expecting you to have a billing system because right. Netflix, Disney plus, like all the other things that they're relying on to get them through right now right. all have a billing system and they are looking at you as the same way. Like regardless of the fact that like, I am nothing like Disney's operation, right? right. Like, but according to them, I'm a business, they're a business. They're expecting to be treated a certain way, if not a little bit more personal. But like I personalize some emails. Every email that comes to my client does not have to be personalized. Right. Hey, you owe X dollars on X things does not have to be prettied up and delivered personally by me via canned. Hey, you owe me this much money. I hope like, yes. Is it a privilege that they're working with me? Absolutely. That I get to work with them? Absolutely. But at the same point, they can deal with an automated robot that says, hey, you've got 20 bucks due on this date and you've got 200, like whatever that looks like, it's not going to offend them. There's and let's other be times honest, Dave, right now, even, even though you're sitting around, can you imagine a client getting this going? Hi, how are you? How are things with COVID? I hope everything's going right. How's the corn? Blah, blah, blah. 14 minutes later, it's, oh, by the way, click here to pay $20. You know what? Yeah. They don't care either. They just what? go, oh yeah, boom, pay. And again, adapting in your career with the clients that you want. When you get your ideal right clients, this is the generation. We're on a generation that only knows how to do everything on their phone. This is yeah. the generation right now that's booking us that has always had a phone. Think about it. The generation that's hiring most of us right now have only ever had a phone. So pay, where am I going? What am I doing? If you send an email, half of them don't even open their email on their phones anymore. It better be, you owe me this, click or this is coming out, done. And most will sign up for automation. Just take it out of my account and be done. That's, but that's the, you just hit the, the key to this. And that's the other thing that's changed the most with the generation is here is the exposure to advertising and large corporations. Right. You have to look, if you want to succeed in your business, like, and I, I say this with full knowing that I am a photographer and I'm going to say it anyway, stop paying attention to what other photographers are doing. Yep. Look at giant corporations. Look at why you're making the purchases you're making at Target or Amazon. Amazon has gotten so much money out of me this year. Oh, yeah. I'm mad about it. I went through my budget item last week and I was like, like wait. dear Lord, like, it's just an egregious why, amount. How come I'm not driving that little blue van? I've paid <laughs> for that little blue van. Why is that little blue van always in my driveway, but never? Like, <laughs> it's, it's here like four times a week. Like, it's been insane. But like, I look at that and I'm like, all right, well, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? And it's, you know what their emails are? single calls to action. Right. And you know what photographers do? We send these things with 900. Hey, I'm so glad you booked me. Here's a styling guide and here's how you plan an engagement session. And you just go off and you're like, what are you doing? One thing at a time. Just exactly. pick one. You can only be excited, that excited about one thing. You got to pick. And you start doing that. And that's where you start looking at these systems from a bigger picture. Like before their engagement session, before we even talk about their engagement session, I send them an email and says, hey, your engagement session is going to be scheduled out soon. As you schedule it, Here's some things I want you to think about. I want you to think about location. I want you to think about outfits. I want to think about what the two of you actually enjoy doing. Right. If you don't enjoy standing in a field looking away from each other like you hate each other, right. don't ask me to take that picture. Right. Please, for both of us. Right. Like, like, let's just skip it in completely. It's so like, if you guys like hanging out at an arcade or a bar, let's go do your engagement session at an arcade or a bar. Like, maybe not right now, but like, that's the gist of it, right? You start looking at these things from single items that you need to guide your clients through. And that's where the true power of a CRM comes through. So you've got automation, you've got the full picture of your business is the other one. Um, looking for something that shows your business as a whole and not just a, oh, this is this month or these are my jobs. Look at something year over year. And so the, the thing that got me to Tabe, and this is, I will full on admit, it is not the prettiest thing in the world, but they have this report. There's two reports they have. The one is job type and the one is lead source report. And what happens is, is you start looking over year over year and you start seeing which products you're selling, which jobs you're doing the most of, and where your jobs are coming in from. 
Right. And so this report starts giving you a little bit more information every single time you enter something into it. And so what happens is, is all of a sudden I started noticing, and this was about three years ago now, all of a sudden I started looking at that report. I, and I look at it once a quarter and sometimes I'll check it um, mid quarter as well. But I got to the end of the quarter and I looked and I was like, I've got almost 10,000 in revenue this year from commercial stuff. I was like, I've never done commercial stuff before. I've never advertised it. I've never done it. I got almost 10 grand. What the, what's going on? And so like, I like pulled up, went back, looked up and sure enough, like a lot of my commercial stuff was getting me a ton of revenue. And I was like, what is going on with this? And so then I built a commercial site, right? And it's, right. it's not great. I will fully, I will be the first to tell you it is not the best website in the world, right. but it was a trial. Right. I spent 20 bucks on it. Let's see what happens, right? So I renewed the domain, did all this stuff. That revenue doubled the next year. Right. Just with 20 bucks, of like, oh, all right. So then what happens if I do this? And then you start doing those things. The, you need to have a big picture view of your business. A lot of photographers are firefighters. They look at, this job has to be done today. This job has to be done today. This job has to be, and they just do the single thing that's in front of them today and don't ever think about the big picture of their business. And that's, again, think like bigger companies. Like, I am a huge Star Wars nerd, right? The Mandalorian is coming out September 30th. You know when they're telling me about it? No. Not September 30th, right? They're telling me about it ahead of time yeah. to build up hype for it. Same thing with weddings. Talk to them. Hey, we shot your wedding yesterday. I hear your images are coming. Hey, your images are now delivered to you. You've got the code. By the way, I am so excited to walk you through what your wedding album is going to look like. Here's right. what it could be right? Start taking those bigger tactics, applying them to your business and think about something other than the, the pictures you have to edit today. Because we like to joke and play games about like, oh yeah, I'm overwhelmed or stuff like that as a photographer, but it's just because we can't control our schedules. Right. And when we take that short-term mindset, we miss so much long-term ability. Like where even like the, the 2020 year has impacted so many people so harshly and it should be a great reminder for a lot of us to look at our business from a long-term perspective and say, what if 2020 happens again in five years? Right. Am I going to be okay then? You know, what's going to happen? Okay, right. like, and some of us, like we had emergency funds, we have stuff and we planned. Exactly. Oh, exactly. And that's the stuff that people aren't asking. And, and, and I think it goes back also to the point of, is you're, you're trying to tell your, your couples and you're trying to reach your ideal clients. And if that's how you talk, then that's the kind of clients that are going to come. It's like, hey, when you work with me, this is what we're going to do. You know, if you have to go on Instagram and Facebook and that, give some of those pro tips and say, hey, this is what happens if you go here. Because if you're constantly showing people in the field, like for me, it's a given I'm going to do a beach photo of you. At some point of my relationship yeah. with you, you're going to land on the beach. I don't need to tell you that. Yeah. I, I don't need to, I don't need you to go there. And I don't wait for you. I don't, I'm waiting for you to go. So Bobby, what day can we go on the beach? It's, Hey, looking at the schedule. If we do, if we do Tuesday at three o'clock, we can grab the, the moss and the trees and hit the beach or sunset. I've just told them what they were going to ask me. So yep. it's, it's filling them in and letting them know about the experience. And I, and I think when we get these CRMs and we start getting in place, we want to be able to use most of the tools, but it's okay if we're not ready to use all of them but we need to be able to use most of them. And now Dave, let's use them in the right way. Yeah. Let's not use them in the wrong way where we're doing twice as much work. So that comes to the learning curve, like yes. literally learn it, correct? Know what it does and the effects you want from it. And don't be afraid yes. to ask that question. Uh, the, the biggest mistake people make when it comes to choosing a CRM is they think that this is uh, going to be a piece of software just like iTunes, right? I download it and then I can play my songs and that's it. It's task, task, done. What you want to look at in a CRM is it is a, an employee for your business. Right. And honestly, it's the employee that doesn't forget anything, which right. like the rest of my employees, we have good days, we have bad days, right? right this one doesn't miss a day. And so you are going to spend the first, like if I, so think about this, right? Like just again, big company picture. If I train somebody, if I work at whatever, and I train somebody and I'm trying to walk them through, hey, this is where we keep the files. I have to physically walk them over to the filing cabinet, say, hey, this is where the files are, right? Normal process. Right. But when it's a CRM, people just expect everything to just work for them and adapt completely to their business. And every business is unique, especially when it comes to photography businesses. Like, I feel like I can say this with relative certainty. As a photographer, you're weird. It's uh -huh. okay. 
you're just going to do things different than anyone else is. And that's what makes us like so good at what we do for our clients. Clients hire us because it's, we have these little quirks and things in our images that nobody else has. Right. And like, I just talked to a, a client was referred to me by another photographer and she's a great photographer there. Her name's Alyssa. Um, and so they, they called me up and, and I was like, Hey, like, what do you like about wedding photography? And, and they talked about these little nuanced details in some of Alyssa's pictures that they had seen when they first, when they first looked at her and she was, she was booked for the date. And so she sent them over to me. And so when I talked to them a little bit, I was like, all right, well, what, what about that picture really? And she's like, well, the way they captured this and the way, the way that Alyssa did this. And then like, and just by hearing that, I was able to get a picture of what Alyssa is as a photographer and who she is. And, and it was really cool, but that's the stuff that changes your different, your business as well. And so when you think about those things from a bigger picture, you have to put the time in to learn this and set it up one step at a time. Right. Don't rush. If you can set up your entire system in a day, you probably are going right. to set yourself up for long-term right. failure. Hey, it's right. going to be something you're going to outgrow so fast. Right. And so, and that's what happened to me, right? So like I started off with different, different CRM. So I started off, I was, I was with, um, Shoot Q, I went to 17 Hats, I bounced back and forth, I went to Pixify, I came back um, to Shoot Q. I went back to Shoot Q a few times, um, repeatedly. I, I just couldn't find a system that I liked. And then finally, a friend of mine was like, you got to check out Tavi. And I was like, I don't want to do this again. Right. <laughs> it's just like PTSD, like just like, right. no, no. But it was May, of all things. It was May, wedding season was about to start, and I just had it. And so I was trying to switch. And so I switched to Tavi. And so the thing that changed, though, so I was like, I'm not just going to do this again. I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at what it was. So I reached out to their support. Uh, they've got a person there, Nicole, who's awesome. Um, and she spent like two hours walking me through stuff and was like, hey, this is what they do. Um, and it's pretty cool. So Tave just recently launched. They've got an account setup team, um, which is awesome. So they'll actually help set your account up for you, which is real neat. Um, right. So it's like a trained version of that. Um, and the thing that, that changed for me that time was I looked at it to go, I have to hire an employee or I have to spend money on a subscription because I physically can't keep up anymore. Right. And that's where I made that decision. The problem is when you make decisions out of firefighting, you tend to make bad ones. And I got real lucky when I chose Tabe that time because if I hadn't, my business would have been dead forever. And right. I'm like, I'm not even making that up. Like I, we were in rebuild mode. We had no money and I was starting from the ground. Like there was no room for failure. We were already at the bottom. And so when I made the choice to start setting up Tave, it was able to give me long-term success because I started thinking about ways to make a little bit more money each time I interacted with a client by providing them a valuable service, not right. stealing, not taking something that I wasn't working for, but also giving them value and having that value return was so, so crucial. And do you think too, that when we look at these services and the CRMs, it has to be usable for our clients? Because yes. the last thing we want is an email going, what the heck did you send me over? I, no, 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 no. Because again, not their job. We're here yep. to make the experience easier. And, and new photographers listening in, if you think for a moment that your business and success is based on the fact that you're a professional button pusher, I'm here to tell you, Dave will tell you, it is probably one to 15% at the most yeah. of why your business will be here. It is the same thing. Service, 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 your relationship you build with your clients and how you do it. And if you do all those things well and they write you a note and it says, oh, by the way, the photos are great, you've done your job. If the photo section is a PS, because then these people are your foundation. And then you want to talk about having a sustainable business because they will continue to tell people, oh my gosh, the experience I have with Bobby, they were prompt with their answers. Everything came. I didn't get inundated with 85 things to do. You know, it was one thing. Oh, and by the way, you should see the pictures. Our gallery's available. They never take it down. Don't ever yeah. discount the fact that that is not a selling point. When with all the photographers out here these days, when that comes up as a question, you better put that in your FAQs. Account, you know, options you have, you know, longevity because of, of, the, of, the, of the galleries. Yeah. So now we're at a point where we've looked at everything. We know we need it. We're going to learn how to make the money to come back. Then it's implementing it. Yeah. One of the questions that came through on Instagram was, if you start with the CRM, does that mean you have to buy all new laptops, all new systems? What I've always heard the functionality of the CRMs required big, big machines. No, That's no. a myth. So I'm sure yeah, you can touch no. on that. Yeah. I, so I know just about every CRM that's out there um, that I've experienced runs in Chrome on my phone 
Yeah. Right? Like, like next to nothing. Um, the mobile, mobile friendliness is a big deal when you are looking for something. Think about being on a wedding day and trying to pull up timelines, things like yep. that. Like you want to make sure you pay attention to that stuff. Um, I have a monster custom built computer. Um, it was built by me, for me by a company called Top Flight Computers. They do a great job. Um, he built it for editing. That's why I have a fancy computer. Right. Otherwise, if I'm doing Tave stuff, it's on my phone. Um, it's on a little MacBook Pro, iPad, things like that. Um, the thing, like you don't need a ton of power. You need to think about things intentionally. Really, the hardest part about setting up a system and stuff like that, it's not like you don't need computers. You don't need this stuff. It's you need the one subscription and then you can start to play with some others. But like automation is a bigger thing. You can start to look at your systems and look at it outside of like you, you get your CRM set up and now like I've got my CRM set up and I've had it set up for a couple of years. I use other services to take things even further, right? Like I use Calendly to automate my client bookings and my right. engagement session schedulings and my album design sessions and all these other things, right? And then I use Zapier to connect that to different places. Um, and I use Zapier. Uh, Zapier is an automation tool if you're not familiar. Um, Zapier and IFTTT is another one. They're both, they both have free plans. Uh, so they're limited depending on how, how deep you get with them. But I automate crazy stuff. Um, I have questionnaires that clients fill out that draft my blog posts on WordPress. Right. Um, crazy automation stuff that like I could have dreamed about 10 years ago is now completely automated for me. File management. I have a, I don't know, 30 terabyte Synology under my desk. I have a 10 terabyte hard drive connected over here. When I export every single wedding, it goes to shoot proof and it goes to both those drives. I don't think about it. I don't have to, oh, I got to back this up and do that. It's just done. It's right. just done. And get that point in your business. Take one task. Like if you can take every week. So we, we you know, so imagine you're a real job, right? 40 hours a week. Right. You can take one task a week and automate it. So you never have to do it again. Right. And you do that for one year and your business will be night and day different in a year's time. And let's face it, the reason we do this is we can't wait to get to Saturday to actually be, or Friday or Sunday, to be the photographer. Yep. I mean, most of us have our cameras and we trust our cameras, we know our cameras, and we make our cameras the tool. Imagine yep. being able to go on a Saturday and you're doing this wedding and know that when you go home, your system's in place and you're going to send that email out and everything happens. And the thing I want to talk about briefly right there on that is when you guys have told your clients the experience and you're going to get your photos in the gallery in three to six weeks. I'm going to remind everybody that on that Sunday, as long as you've backed everything up and done everything, take Sunday, have that, that we're going to talk a little bit about mental health before we let Dave go. But you guys, you put these things in place. I'm all about, you know, over, you know, let's see, let's under, you know, under, under deliver and over promise. I'm all about that. Right. But you put in place X amount of weeks. Don't yep. hurry up and rush it through just to go, oh my gosh, I got it. Because if you think your client's going to go, oh, and I got the photos back really fast, blah, blah, blah. Then wait for the email that says, hey, these three look exactly the same or something wasn't right. Now, everything you've just rushed through, you've got a couple negative emails. So yep. you have to take the time to do this. And if you have the services in place, then on Saturday, you get to be the photographer because you know everything you have in place Saturday night is going to yep. give you Sunday and maybe even give you Monday. So the mental health aspect of this, Dave, is that's what all this can do for your business so that you can have a purposeful business and a purposeful life. And yeah. that's something that you learn the hard way and you don't want other photographers or other business people to yeah. learn, but it's, it's key. It's so crucial. And uh, there was a, I think uh, it came across my newsfeed yesterday as an author, uh, Bob Goff. I think he said, uh, don't confuse a busy life with a purposeful one. Right. Uh, and I, I, I just love it. And, the thing that I did, and, and it's so timely because I had the, like the time hop, which lets you go like years right. back in memories and stuff. And so my, my son turns three today. And right. And so I mentioned my daughter being born and how I missed most of that year. Like I, she was born May 8th and by May 15th, 16th, I was already shooting weddings again. Right. Um, I was right back in. I did it. And, and like I said, it, it did a lot of, a lot of harm. But when my son was born, I was born three years ago. That was the first year that my systems were set up. And so what happened was, is we found out we were going to labor. I had shot my, my last wedding and been delivered. And so we found out we were going to labor and I still had a bunch of weddings coming up later on in the fall and it was going to be in September. And so I had, we got to the hospital 
and I turned everything off. I uninstalled my email from my phone. I turned my phone, like the only people that could text me were like direct, hey, this is like gonna be a family member that needs to be in touch with me. And I shut every single thing down. And the best part about all of that was I came back out after we, we so we left the hospital, we stayed there two days and we came back home. And uh, I think it was like two or three days in, I, I checked in on my email and I had clients that were responding to emails that my systems had sent to them. And they said, oh my goodness, don't think about me. Don't worry about me right, right now. You just spend time with your family. And I realized, I'm like, what are they talking about? And I realized that one of my automated emails was just like, hey, just a heads up, I'm gonna be out of the, I'm gonna be out of the office for the next few days. Here's the things you, you'll need from me. If you need anything, here's how to get in touch with the um, next person online, like, and all this stuff. And I didn't have to worry for the first time. And that peace of mind was something that I really took forward with me. So I, up until that point, it was just building systems, right? It was just trying to eliminate tasks, trying to do all this stuff. But then, like you mentioned, a purposeful life. Like I really started to look and be like, well, what could I do? if I had more time, like what could I accomplish with this? And so the, the thing that changed after that was I started setting very harsh rules for myself. Um, like in credit, like I will not budge on these. I don't care what. Not so negative. Friday, yeah, Fridays, I don't shoot weddings. Um, same as Sundays. So now, and, and now I realize that's a little bit, I'm in my career enough where I'm charging enough where that's an option for me. Other people aren't, maybe not, they might not be there just yet. And I understand that, right? So that's, it's a goal for down the road um, and not something to just dismiss because, oh, well, I still need every one. I understand right. that. Um, but I started saying, hey, I won't shoot these weddings. July 4th, this is going to sound so dumb. I, and I understand how dumb it is. I like grilling. I like grilling a lot. It's, right. it's, it's a stupid hobby that I have that I have taken way too far. You cannot book me for July 4th. No. Any other holiday, there is like some weird negotiable rate that I will offer for certain things. You cannot have my July 4th. It is my day. Right. It is my one day where I can grill in my backyard and act like just ridiculous. But like I start setting those boundaries, right? Kids' birthdays, non-negotiables. Right. I, won't, I won't. I don't care. I don't care. Time with my spouse, we have date nights budgeted in. And you know what that means? I don't care if I get an inquiry. Right. I will lose $3,000 to spend a night undisturbed with my spouse. Right. It's fine. It's right. scary at first. Like, I, and I know like somebody's like freaking out at the idea of that right, right now. Like, but no, they just inquired. Well, I have to tell them right now. I think he is. Yeah. It's, he's one of those guys I want. When you hear him on stage, he's going to talk about all his millions. And that is such a misnomer. And yeah. what most of us are, tr we're trying to help you. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm like you. Don't make the mistakes I made. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go ahead, but there are consequences when you do good and there's consequences when you do bad. And I fully believe that the better we all do, the better we all do, yeah. then we can do so much more good in our communities and, and then we can be making an impact. And yep. I know sometimes that sounds like holy roly when I speak about it, but I firmly believe that what we do is important as photographers. We yeah. are the historians and we are doing a purpose, but we can do more with that by saying no to certain opportunities that afford us greater gifts and impact that we can be. And so, yes, when people are listening in, it's the same way. I started about three, four years ago now. I take all of July off because yep. when am I ever going to travel back to Missouri and see my family? You know, it's summer. It's very hot down here. And while everybody says, oh, it's great and I don't care, they're going to complain about the heat. They're going to do yep. all this. And it's peak tourist season here on the island. So you know what? I take the whole month off for me. Yep. I go do something for the weekend. I go visit my family for 10 days and same thing. I'm not answering my email or anything. People know. And same way. Hey gosh, Bobby, so glad you're on this trip or I'll post something on my personal Facebook page. Oh my gosh, I love that. And you know what? People are still posting their weddings that I delivered in June that are talking about it. I still have one or a few things that I stick up and post. I might be traveling going, oh my God, this would be a great spot if you're getting married and wherever I went to, but I'll grab a couple spots and then I'll stay home. And then I'm right back at it. But that became my big non-negotiable. And it's not yeah. because I'm rich. It's because by the time I get to July in the market that I'm in, I could already have 20 weddings under my belt because we, we work through January, yeah. February, March mentally exhausted and if i'm not being the best me i can't serve you the best way so you that's know that's 100%. what that's what dave and i are both trying to tell you guys about the mental health and, and and taking the choice and that whatever crm that you choose or automations you choose 
they're going to, they're going to help you get that mental help. I do want you to talk a little bit about your blueprint, your blueprint that you offer. And yeah. I want you to tell people a little bit about some of the ways that you're helping photographers grow and extend and, and why we can't be on our stage speaking or awesome places. You yeah. still are offering value. If people go to your website and again, Tina has everything linked to the show notes, everything Dave's yeah. talked about will be linked, but let's hear from your voice a little bit about what that plan is important and why you value offering that. Yeah. So uh, everything about, like I mentioned, we, we get into this firefighting mode, right? And so we start thinking about our business in, in a very reactionary nature. And if you spend any time reading business books or just about like listening to business podcasts or anything, you're never going to be successful long-term if that's your reactionary, if you're always reactionary. And so the thing that I do, it's a very simple process. And, and I, I, I outline the whole thing publicly because most people need help actually <laughs> following it out. Right. Um, but it's pause, analyze, design. So you're really just looking to pad your schedule as the, as the short pitch. And so the first thing you have to do is you have to slow down. And I, I cannot overstress how much of a gift in disguise 2020 has been for the chance for us to slow down. Right. I have spent more time with my family this year than I have in the rest of my career as a wedding photographer. And I've made intentional steps to for this past year. This is the longest I have not been on an airplane in over a decade. Yep. Yep. Right. I, I have not been in my state this long, let right. alone my house this long. Exactly. <laughs> like, and because and at first it was a little frustrating, <laughs> a three-year-old, a six-year-old, there was a lot happening, right. but like, it's been a gift in so many ways. I've gotten to see so many, like my kid, I was sitting there working on my laptop this morning, just poking around a little, a few things here and there. And my kid fell and just landed on his head. And it was hilarious because it was from couch to floor. So he was not in danger, which is rule number one of funny. Right. Um, and then he just stuck on his head for like a few seconds. And it was just this little moment that means nothing to anyone else, but it was just his comical personality that I got to see full blown. Right. And those things that I would have caught missed otherwise. So we start by slowing down, right? Take all of your business and just stop operating for a week. And I will, what I usually recommend for clients is I tell photographers, hey, tell your clients you are on vacation this right. week. You are unreachable for this week. And you're just going to pause those client communications. And then we're going to analyze everything from the way you flow your images to the way you communicate with your clients, to the way you think about your business long-term, how you spend your money, all this stuff. We just try to dive in and analyze each stage of that. And when we go in and break that all down, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to design what it should look like. Design, it's just like budgeting. And like budgeting is such a, a, an ugly word to a lot of people, but like you're only given X number of hours in a week. Right. And so many photographers, like you are working so many more of them than you think you are. And like anyone that wants to like fight me on this, there's a software called Rescue Time. It's yep. free. You can install it on your computer and it will tell you exactly how many hours a week you are spending on exactly what topic or what like little theme it is. And you can train it and you start seeing how productive you are and how many hours you're spending. And so in most clients, I talk to a bunch of photographers and they're like, oh, it takes me X number of hours to edit and deliver and all that stuff. I'm like, I bet you it takes you a third of that time. Right. Like, oh, well, what do you do while you, what do you do while you edit? Like, oh, I always watch Netflix. All right. Well, what if you edited without Netflix? Right. <laughs> what if you didn't? Like, just, just hear me. Like, just, right. just a thought. What if this happened? And there's a lot of times where little things like that make a huge, huge impact. And so that's really what I, what I do in this, in this coaching process is I really guide people through that in their business. And so it's generally a three month process. Um, we start in that two week stretch where we first pause everything. And then we, it's a slow update where the whole process actually takes about two weeks. Um, but I like being there before and after it to just guide people through, make sure it's right. a safe transition from one system to another. Um, and the beauty, beautiful thing about it is it's system agnostic. Um, I don't care if you already have a CRM and you're doing this stuff, you can look at a lot of this stuff and apply it to any system um, that you're using. Uh, I've seen people like, I've gotten real gnarly with stuff to try and do stuff for free. You can take an Excel spreadsheet and Zapier and do some pretty sweet stuff. Yep. You can automate a lot. You got a Gmail account, you're set. Like there is a lot that you can do. And the thing, the two things that like are the, the probably key takeaways and the reason that I do these workshops and the reason that I, I talk in general is there are two enemies that you really have. Uh, the first one is that you don't ever think you're going to be perfect. And so you don't start. And so I can't design the perfect system. So I'm not even going to start. And the second one is more photographers love to chase more, more money, more clients, more, whatever, find what enough is, write it down on paper and stick it up on your wall. Mm -hmm. And when you hit that number, take your family, take your friends, do something and blow that celebration out of the water. I like, we hit, and I have an enough number every year. So I have an enough number of clients. I have enough number of weddings and I have enough number for revenue. When we hit that, we have a steak dinner at my house. 
Exactly. Every single year. And that's because at that point, I've done what I set out to do. And if I do more, that's great. But like, I'm not looking to be a millionaire in this job. Long term, I save up a lot, right? I, I care about the future. I plan things out. But like, I take home a moderate salary every year. But we live comfortably. I enjoy time off. I'm not working every hour of my life. And that's the stuff that really, like, that's why I do these coaching calls. And that's why I care about the industry. That's why you care about the industry. Right. It's just because we want to see you live the most full life that you can, take care of your clients the way that they deserve to be taken care of, and build the best life possible for yourself. Well, and, and this, is a, this, this is a sustainable career. You yeah. can actually, but I think what they get afraid of is, okay, if, I don't, if I'm not making eight or nine figures, I'm a failure. Again, goes back to what we said earlier. I don't want to compare myself. The reason that sets me apart is me. I don't do anything like you do. I don't do anything like the other photographers does. Exactly. This is me. And this is what sets me apart. You're attracted to me because of some photos, but you're yep. investing in me because of how I made you feel during the process, whether it's a CRM or it's a phone call or it's whatever. And then also I'm real. Just yeah. like you have a job, the client that's booking me, you go on vacation. How many times, if we, if, we, if we could do a show of hands and all the people listening in would be like, I sent an email to my client and I got an automatic message that they're out of their office on vacation. Why are you not doing that? Just yeah. because you're the CEO of your career and the CEO of your business, going right back to what Dave said, think about it as a business, that CEO isn't even looking at your emails or anything yeah. else and he's on vacation. So you have to do, be the CEO take yeah. the vacation and you tell everybody I'm on vacation while we have a very important job. We're not saving lives. Yeah. We're preserving moments yep. to be treasured for lives. Just because your mom wants to know if that blue dress is the right color that's going yep. to match the others. And you send me a photo of your mom in a really, really poorly lit dressing room. <laughs> and you're asking me the question. My mom wants to know if Bobby thinks this blue dress will class with these bridesmaids dresses. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. And I mean, it's okay. It's, it's okay, okay that you okay don't. not to care. I care about the experience I'm going to offer you. But there, number one, it's a no-win situation to answer. You need to be in the dress that makes you feel the best for yourself. All right? Yeah. It has no matter. But when you start getting these things in place – and you want to have a sustainable growth. I love doing this and pushing 60. I, I do have clients that say, you can't retire Bobby until my daughter who is eight walks down the aisle. Well, the joke is I'll have a walker with God knows what kind of phone, <laughs> but there comes a point where, and I have a talk on this when my body says I'm tired and my brain says, keep going. I'm at that point in my career. And I've been yeah. very vocal about that, that I'm not afraid to say my body's tired. I have rheumatoid arthritis It my hands. Yeah. I've made adjustments in camera gear. I, I'm now at the Fuji's because it's still a valuable equipment. It does its job because I'm the tool making the camera work yeah. and it gives me some ease. And when I speak on this subject or people hear about it, does it make people not hire me? Sure. I'm sure there's four or five people that think, oh my God, you're kind of old. What will happen? And that's yeah. great. Cause you know what? Not my client, exactly. you know, and the automated systems that are in place for the business to run and the way that all new photographers can become middle photographers that can mm -hmm. become long-term photographers that will go on teaching. This craft will continue to grow and evolve. And yep. we are the ones that will help keep it alive, but we have to be able to be around long enough to do it and not just yep. treat it as a hobby. And, and exactly. that's the key point. So, you know, I hope listeners you've learned that why we need CRMs, he's debunked some of the myths from you about you don't have these excuses not to have them. Yeah. You're going to know how to reach out to him. I'm going to encourage you to take one of his courses. You got to hear him speak when we get back to live speaks. I'm hoping we're going to be on the yeah. stage together somewhere, but we're going to have all this. So before you leave, one of the last things I always try to ask everybody, and then you can tell us about the wonderful, you know, Tave bonus is give me three words that you hope clients, fellow industry people feel about you. Three words that you're hoping people use to describe who you are as a person. Uh, yeah. I, let me think. So I think realistically, my top three, real and right priorities. Uh, it's, I, I hope that nobody leaves without wondering, wondering where my focus is. 
And it's one of the things I love about Shoe Proof is their, their slogan, which I'm so yeah. mad that I never, I know, I never got the chance to steal. I know, aren't you pissed that you don't have that? Oh, all the time. Uh, but focus on what matters most, right? Yeah. That, that's, I did a video with them a few years ago and uh, on that topic and focus on what matters most. That's what I, I hope no, no one doubts my focus. Right. I hope that I hope my clients know that I left everything on the table for them. I hope my family knows the same. Right. And I hope at the end of the day, I live a life that I'm proud of and not one that I just worked away. Right. Exactly. That the moments that we took time to capture other people are as memorable as we remember capturing them, but that our family understands we chose some of those weekends to deliver that, but they have just as many with us and that we're, yep. and that we exist in those family photos with our family. I exactly. joke all the time about that saying is she proof has been gracious to me and, and gives me swag when I talk. And every time <laughs> I throw one of those cozies out, I always get the, Oh my God, this is great. I'm like, yeah, not mine. Dang, that's not my <laughs> phrase, you know, but I, I credit them. So remind yeah. our listeners real quick, you got it. Tave was really gracious and, and allowed you to offer something. So I'll have you mention yes. it and then Tina will link it back, but tell us a little bit about it and why we need to grab a hold of it. Yeah, so it's it's a pretty sweet deal. So it's uh the the code B Fabo B E F A B B O uh, will get you fifty percent off of a monthly plan for the first twelve months, and if you message support and ask, they will do your account setup, which is normally a charge service for free. So oh that's my gosh. only only till the end of September, and that is a guided process. So they have somebody dedicated to walking people through this. Um, so pretty sweet. Um, they're, they just launched this service a little while ago and they're looking to get some people into it. So they're pretty excited about it. Um, but we're also just excited as a whole. Just, I've always, I've really loved the idea of what Tave brings to people and seeing them under the shoe proof umbrella is a, is an exciting thing. Oh yeah, me too. I love it. And, and I'm going to shout right now to all the gang of shoe proof and Tave, you know, thank you for being Fabo. I mean, you know, I've been a fan for years and, uh, and, uh, you may not know me all personally, but you, anytime I need something, y'all send me something. So again, Dave, you know, kudos to you. Thank you so much for the, for your space, for honoring us with your time. Listeners, you know, everything's going to be connected back to Dave. You're going to be able to grab them. Remember everybody just start. You heard it from Dave. Don't be afraid to take those steps. Believe, believe, believe in yourself because you guys as photographers are making a difference. And every single night that you leave a wedding and you grab a taco, you're going to think of this guy right here. Thank you so much, Dave. Till next time, everybody cheering you on. Have a fabulous weekend. For more information about today's show, check out the show notes on the BeFabo blog at bobbybrinkman.com. Along with some offers for our listeners, you'll also find information about how to work with Bobby as a coach, a speaker, or for workshops. She'd love to collaborate with you. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe to the podcast to keep motivation coming to your earbuds. Be Fabo.